guys welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in today i want to show you what has been going on and just show you around a little bit here a little bit there let's get started first i'm gonna do some composting i have my frozen scraps and a pizza box as you can see i have gotten myself a bigger compost box just a huge one box instead of two little ones and i am trying my best to fill it up at this point at the end of the season however it becomes quite easy to fill it up so what i usually do is break down my box and just put down scraps on top of it i put my scraps in the freezer whatever i got my old flowers here old bread old vegetables and fruits so let's put it in here my ladies are already munching on the scraps. However, I do want to water down that cardboard, make sure it sticks, and defrost the rest of the scraps. I have reduced my trash so much by just throwing away cardboard and food scraps in my compost pile. If you're interested in that, to create yourself a compost pile just like this. And the thing is, is that if you're worried about smell or critters or anything like that, the cardboard really masks it, not to the extreme extent, but to some extent it does mask it. So no critters come around and dig it up. And we gotta take care of one issue that has occurred in my corn bed. So as you know, my corn has been doing pretty well. As you can see, it has grown quite substantially. However, there were some crowded spots and I really wanted to thin it. Well, apparently, based on these results, corn really does not like to be thinned. I did not know this because this is my first time growing corn. So I'm going to go ahead and put some fresh seeds in those spots. And even though it's gonna be a little late, I rather have actual corn plants rather than no corn plants and it actually I think will work out pretty good because it will almost stagger the planting because these plants have come up about two weeks ago so that's perfect. So I planted this corn last time and it looks like it gave me almost 100% germination so I'm just gonna stick one seed in the spot where I think I need to replant the corn. Now that the corn is replanted, I want to also focus on this bed and thin some of my melons over here because I sowed them in anticipation that only a few seeds will germinate. Well, again, I have almost 90% germination, so I really need to thin my seedlings here. Basically, I'm going to be killing some of my seedlings, which is very sad, but in the grand scheme of things, most of the time you have to do it so the plant survives and melons are can be very friendly with each other sometimes not so much especially zucchini plants they get really big so i'm gonna go ahead and prune them on to over here you see that there are two healthy zucchini plants and i have to get rid of one this one looks a little healthier a little greener so i'm gonna go ahead and snip the other one this will go into my compost pile do the same thing with my melons or it's either cantaloupe or squash i don't know i don't remember i'm gonna snip this and that my gosh i'm gonna snip this and these ones so basically you just want to pick the best looking one and give them the best chance here's more all three germinated snip those Here's all three germinated again. Let's snip these. Very sad to cut all of this back, but you gotta think for the future and make sure they have enough space to develop and grow nice and healthy. Now that we have done some pruning and some planting, let's harvest some. I'm running low on my onion greens, so I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of my onion greens. harvested maybe a fourth of the bed got a really nice looking bunch of green onions and I'm gonna leave the rest to harvest later as I need it so there's no real need to trim your onions however if you like to eat them go for it another thing that you can do with the abundance of green onions and if you want to harvest them you can harvest them and then dehydrate them and 
uh, make them into a powder. So then that powder will be green, but it will taste just like an onion powder. So fun little, fun little experiment there. While we're at this bed, look at this sunflower. And yes, I have heard that sunflowers kind of suck out all the nutrients from the soil. However, I'm trying to feed this bed extra because of that fact, but I just can't. I cannot get rid of this. Look at that guy. It's crazy. I'm so excited for it to bloom. So last year in this spot, I sowed some like tiny ornamental sunflowers. And I think that's what these are. There's a few of them that are coming up. I don't remember sowing anything remotely this big. So I am just really curious to see what this sunflower is. Harvesting some snow and snap peas. Finally enough to actually harvest some for later rather than eating all of them here in the garden. I'm trying to harvest my strawberries on a regular basis and I still get really good, really good harvest. However, if I miss a day or even an afternoon, here's what happens. I got critters, chickmunks, my chickens, they get in and they see that contrast, that vibrant red color, and of course they want it. So I don't blame them. So this will go to compost. However, I would like to harvest more of my strawberries. Even though I have to share my garden with all the nature because that's how organic gardening works, I think it's a pretty good harvest anyways. Now that we've done the harvesting, let's just take a look around and see what's going on with the rest of the garden. Here in my brassica bed, I pulled out one of the bok choy and sauteed and ate it with some Chinese. Here is my other bok choy plants. I guess I am saving all of these for seeds. Um, they're really pretty, good for pollinators, however, this right here, this is actually one of the most delicious ways to eat bok choy is just literally right before sprouting. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest this as well. My broccolis are doing good. Nothing has really, you know, bolted or died. So I'm really happy about that. However, my chickens have been getting into this bed and kind of trampling all over. At first I was upset. But then I realized that I have a real problem coming on here in these warmer months that the butterfly moths and the caterpillars and the slugs are going to devour this bed right here. And I think the chickens have actually been doing good things. I think the, the chickens are, have actually been eating the eggs and the larva states because I'm not seeing a single pest in here, which is quite unusual. One bed that my chickens are absolutely not welcome in is my tomato bed and they have obviously been here evidence right here however look at my tomatoes guys they're doing really good they're doing really great they have bounced back and i am so glad to see it however you see that chickens have done some damage here I'm going to be pruning my tomatoes in just a few short days or weeks when they have grown a little bit. So I'm not trimming off all the growth, just enough so the main stalk has enough room to grow. So I'll show you guys that once I do it. However, I'm very pleased with the growth that I'm having. Oh, peppers on the other hand, peppers are taking their time. However, as you can see, we do have some decent growth happening and I am very, very happy. My peppers are finally starting to come alive, which is so great to see. I only have a few Buena Mulatas that have survived. I'm really hoping that they make it. They don't look too promising. Here I sewed my nasturtiums. And let's take a look at my cucumber bed. My cucumbers have finally started to come up. Here's a cucumber, and this is a melon of sorts that you don't need to thin. These do pretty well because they actually will climb this 
all the way up and do really well without struggling for space. These are my bush beans. Look at this growth. It's so amazing. I'm so excited. They're doing really good. And those are my pole beans, also doing amazing. Over there, I sowed some nasturtiums. They're coming up. Over here, I sowed some marigolds. They are coming up. Here, I also sowed a flower. I don't remember exactly which one, but nothing has come up. So, because my cucamelons have not come up on that side of the trellis where my peas are, I went ahead and sowed my cucamelons here so I can then replant them and plant them over there on that side of the trellis. I think the problem might have been is that there is not enough sun over here and there's plenty of sun over here. And last but not least is my herb bed. My dill is finally starting to look like dill. I'm so excited for it. I'm keeping my oregano nice and trimmed and my cilantro out of the way. I actually st staked it up because it was falling over. And my basil is starting to finally come up. However, my shives, nothing on there. I still have some pots of tomatoes and peppers and brassicas that I'm trying to give away. Here's another spot where I am putting some peppers in just in case if my other pepper plants don't make it. And I have some healthier Buena Mulatas here. So I'm really happy about that. There's some kale, there's some lettuce. Okay, to be honest, overall, I am battling with those girls over my garden. However, I am still quite happy with what I'm getting out of it here in the beginning of June. I mean, that's not a bad harvest here. And I'm gonna be putting these, uh, brassica shoots on my pizza. I'm gonna be snacking on these strawberries just fresh. The onions go on the eggs. The sweet peas go as a snack. Honestly, this could be my whole lunch, really. <laughs> all in all, I am very pleased and happy, and hopefully we can call some truths with those guys. But now they are doing a good job raking my compost pile, um, eating up all the scraps, and keeping the pests away out of my garden. Thank you guys so much for joining me on another day with Garden A Little. I hope I'm inspiring you to start growing some food, to start enjoying the seeds, and just enjoying this moments of peace and happiness. And I hope you go garden a little. Bye, have a good day.